สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Good morning ready and gentlemen คุณนิจิวา Welcome to uh, at eye clinic today we will welcome Dr. Tomoyuki Kashima from Japan to Bangkok and to Thailand 
for give us a special lecture for today. My name is uh, Dr. Domantri Rodamrong Ratana. I am at the uh, Thammasat University Hospital. I am a moderator for today. Right. Okay, Kap. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, today we have the uh, set up the first uh, at I oculofacial plastic uh, forum. Uh, we have a very good opportunity that uh, Tommy, Dr. Kashima from Japan, he uh, 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 gave his precious time to join with us. So I think it's a good idea to invite a special person like him to share and to teach and to instruct us and his experience about uh, his uh, surgery in Japan and how he created the excellent and premium practice in his country. So today I am sure that we will learn a lot from each other. We have a, a Thai local speaker, a Japanese speaker, and a participant at home. So I think it's a good uh, 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 day today. Right. Uh -huh. And so well, today uh, we will start uh, for the first session. And after that we have a few three to five minutes for uh, discussion. Please uh, feel free uh, for the local uh, uh, participant. If they have the question, please raise your hand and we will put the mic to you and we can discuss immediately. And the participant at home, if uh, have the question, please uh, send us by the Facebook Live and they have the message to tell us about the question so we can ask the speaker immediately. So right now it's about um, uh, time to yeah. start. Uh -huh. yeah. Doctor, uh, the first speaker, Dr. Dongmanti, our, our, our good friend, our good colleague, he is the uh, senior instructor at the Thammasat University. He graduated the medicine from Lama Chipadi and he uh, had the fellowship, uh, 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 residency training in Thammasat and after that he go to Chicago, Illinois uh, University for his uh, oculoplastic uh, fellowship program. So uh, uh, Dr. Domonti uh, uh, will give us a talk about the uh, how to correct the complication in the Asian bifidoplasty. Yep. Thank you Dr. Atwood for uh, introducing me. Okay, so today uh, I will talk about uh, how to correct uh, complication in Asian bifidoplasty. So uh, now, nowadays uh, we do a lot of uh, case of the aesthetic surgery and functional surgery for correction of the problem of the eyelid. So the complication of the eyelid that are uh, more frequent to happen, the number one is the ptosis of the eyelid, the upper eyelid. Uh, number two is the lack of tumors caused by incorrect uh, resection of the skin. Number three is the scarring. And number four is the eyelid for anomalies. Oh, uh, the reason that many doctors uh, don't want to do the eyelid surgery because after doing the eyelid surgery, we need to have a symmetry. If there are a symmetry, uh, a patient will be not happy. So before I start uh, how to correct this, the first thing that uh, I would like to share my idea in my practice, uh, when is the proper time to correct the upper eyelid, bifidoplasty? Usually, I always uh, do the revision surgery uh, if the patient doesn't happy and they want me to correct I will uh, correct it within the two weeks after the first surgery uh, because I think uh, the original wound uh, can be split open easily and the neovascularization and adhesion is not bothering me. So uh, after the two weeks, there may be a neovascularization and an adhesion that is cost me uh, how to do the surgery. Uh, 
if the patient come to me after the two weeks, I will tell uh, my patient uh, to wait for at least uh, two, uh, at least three to four months for non-complicated case. Uh, my meaning of the complicated case is the normal uh, liver function, or there are no uh, injury to the liver muscle. And in complicated case, such as a uh, multiple ptosis correction surgery, uh, my idea uh, is better to wait for six months or longer to have the injured liver complex to heal it. And the prevention is uh, best than, than treatment. Uh, firstly, when I uh, access the patient, I need to see that uh, the patient have the uh, uh, underestimate or undercorrected nephrotosis before or not. Uh, I always to check for the liver function and uh, MRD1 before performing any upper nephroplasty. And uh, I think the surgeon with uh, master revision of the uh, HMRO upper nephroplasty should always be familiar to do correction of nephrotosis too. Uh, today I will talk. Uh, my t technique that I, I usually done when I uh, repair a tosis after the pepharoplasty. Before I repair it, I need to do the physical examination first. I see the pupil, the ectocular movement, cranial nerve function, and I test with the fit. 10% phenylephrine, and I access a lack of tomos, a and dry eye. The, the main reason to uh, to see the <coughs> to examine the patient first, because uh, after a nephroplasty, a patient has a ptosis, but all of the ptosis is not uh, from uh, only the from cosmetic because there may be uh, underlying ptosis before that uh, beyond uh, traumatic ptosis or involutional ptosis. Some patient has a, mechanic, uh, has a neurogenic ptosis or myogenic ptosis before. In my university, this is the ptosis case. Uh, most of my patient that have the ptosis is a form of involutional ptosis. But uh, we found that second cause is a neurogenic ptosis. Hence, after we do the nephropathy, sometimes uh, they have the ptosis and they have an asymmetric crease because the patient has the neurogenic ptosis before. This is very important that you need to access the patient first before you do the surgery. Uh, this is uh, my patient. She, she did a ptosis correction, but she still has a uh, complaint that she also has not uh, happy with the result. She has an uh, orbital mass that causes the ptosis. So, next, I will talk about my, my technique to correct the ptosis after. Bifropasty. I after I check with the ten percent phenylephrine, and the result is uh, is good. Uh, if the the crease and the MRD one is symmetry, I prefer to do the MMCR or Muller muscle contractile resection for in the size of the of a torsis size. And uh, this is my video to do the uh, Muller muscle contractile resection for collected ptosis after the nephropathy. Uh, I think it is uh, easy to to do for the ophthalmologist, uh, general ophthalmologist. Uh, when you uh, see a patient that have a 
ketosis after blepharoplasty you can uh, access the patient as I talked before and the patient uh, respond well to the phenylephrine you can do the MMCR after the local injection so you inverted the eyelid and uh, this is uh, my technique to invert the eyelid. You use the four o seal to help uh, to invert the upper eyelid with the dermal retractor. After you invert the uh, upper eyelid. Uh, Usually, I uh, I resection about the uh, 10 millimeter of the contractile muscle muscle complex, and I usually use the six O seals to pull up a uh, contractile and muscle muscle complex. This is my technique. Uh, how to. Uh, how how to use the four or seal, uh, sorry six or seal, to pull up the molar and contractile complex. I decided to uh, cut about the eight millimeter, so I uh, measure about the four millimeter from the lower tarsus. Yeah, and then I use the four o uh, six o seals to pull up the contact wire. For the three side at the central, medial, and lateral. And then I, I use the Putterman cramp uh, to cramp the contractile muscle muscle. And uh, I cut the uh, contractile muscle muscle complex. And then I external suture it. Yeah. Usually I, I use a, a comic cat cut to suture the muscle muscle. Contractile muscle muscle before, uh, and my suture sometimes no need for suture removal because I use the Comicat 6O. But after two weeks, uh, I always to pull pull out a suture. So this muscle uh, muscle wibulectomy can kill the uh, tosis after blepharoplasty. This is the surgical microanatomy. Uh, you can see that uh, before the surgery, the uh, liveter complex, uh, the position of the liveter complex is low than normal. But after we do the contractile muscle muscle resection, the liveter complex uh, tucking to the upper part. This is the main mechanism. And again, this is the surgical microanatomy of the muscle muscle contactile wall section. You can see that uh, the liberator complex tucking to the upper level. So for my take-home message, uh, all tosis after surgery is not involutional tosis or from traumatic tosis. You need to access a patient that they have uh, any another cause of the tosis or not. And my technique that 
do a lot after uh, Buffalo uh, after the tour from Buffalo party is I did the MMCR this is a cost effective and a reliable result especially in the finish test positive patient and uh, I would like to promote for our colleague, my colleague, to do the upper eyelid before past the surgery. I think uh, we can do it well because we know the anatomy of the upper eyelid and we know more about the eye. Thank you very much for your attention. So, any question from Fro? Or I will introduce the new speaker. Um, Tommy, any question, please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, after minus five, uh, so at the, uh, after the last slide, the you said uh, all the ophthalmologists should do blepharoplasty, like as a cataract surgery, right? Yeah. It's uh, same as my dream. Oh. Yeah, so how you uh, do that? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, yeah. How, how, how to? Yeah, how to promote. Promote, yes, yes. Thai residents? Yes. To do the upper eyelid, referral party to. So we need to know that uh, actually uh, in the uh, Thai population uh, and also in Japan I think it's a aging uh, time so a patient we, we do a patient have a dermatosclerosis uh, yeah so I think we can uh, help them right uh, we can use the, the same technique we not only do only the cosmetic but we want uh, to make our patient to have a, a clear vision, right? Because you know that when patient have the dermatosclerosis or the ptosis, uh, the visual field of a patient uh, may be the obstructed by the redundant upper eyelid. And for, for today, right, we try to uh, and I think that for oculoplastic surgeon in Thailand, we try to educate for the new generation of uh, optometrists to do to to do the bephoroplasty. Yeah. Right. Thank you for your question. Now I think uh, dermatosclerosis and the ptosis is very frequent for elder patient, as like uh, cataract surgery, uh, cataract. So uh, I. I'm sh very sure your dream will, will come true. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, do you have any other questions? No. So, uh, for the next uh, presenter or speaker, uh, let me introduce a little bit for Dr. Kashima. This uh, biography he graduated from medical to Goodman University. Department University, Japan, and he studied in University in Department of Authority Department University, and uh, class of Department of Training in uh, Department University. Then he go to do the International Fellow of Oculo Plastic Service at the Star Eye Institute at the UCLA. Now, uh, he is the open oculofacial clinic uh, at the uh, Gunma and Tokyo, Osaka and Chiba. Please welcome Dr. Kashima. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, me, this is uh, my for the audience. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, this is, is not. Uh, yeah, can you hold a uh, good piece one in the first one and this one if you have a 
or with your finger, that would be wonderful. Okay. This is, uh, okay. yep. This is uh, like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> So today, uh, during the prepare the slide, um, we we have met each other in the international conference. Yes. So that's a very good uh, opportunity to know friends and have the special friendship with a uh, with friend that love uh, in this career the same and the career route quite the same. We fight a lot initially, yeah. Yeah. and so. I, I heard from from Duong that Duong have the get chance to visit Kashima uh, last year for 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 some uh, short period visiting and Duong told me that uh, Kashima have the very good success in his career within four five years he yeah. had created about four uh, very big office so that's why uh, he is the uh, uh, really, really interesting person. <laughs> so I invite him, and he he is so uh, kind to uh, say yes to share us about his experience. I think if we uh, have the question, we can ask him. And in Thailand, it's quite uh, unusual yeah. that one doctor heading to the private practice immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nah, that's a uh, that's quite unusual for us. Yeah. Most of the us uh, we work uh, like uh, for a private hospital. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good chance that some maybe today Tommy will inspire something inside us yeah. and will some up our new generation may have something to initiate like yeah. him. Yeah. So thank, thank you, you, Tommy. Yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you for a uh, very kind uh, introduction, introduction for me. Uh, let's talk, uh, let's start my talk. To, uh, is it okay? Or? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I, think, uh, I thank Dr. Goff and Dr. Duan uh, for uh, inviting me to this lecture course. I like Thai people because they are nice and polite and uh, I like Thai food because tasty and spicy. <laughs> so I love to come to uh, Thailand uh, because uh, please invite me next time too. So let's move on to the lecture. My first topic is how to initiate uh, and optimize premium private oculofacial plastic clinic in Japan. So I have no financial disclosure. Let me introduce myself. When I was a medical student, I thought like this. Ophthalmology department in Gumba University is said to be a high level. I'd like to run cataract surgery and vitrectomy at high level and start my own practice as soon as possible. This is a schema of sense of values in Gumba University. Traditionally, the strength is on the retina and macular disease. The oculoplastic is the lowest. But I found that there was a very long queue to become a surgeon. If I use metaphor to mountain trail, it looks too long even to enter the trail. So I think, again, from the starting point. Is this value true? So I switched to run oculoplastic, but when I wanted to uh, study oculoplastics, senior doctor said to me, oculoplastic is too cheap. You should do cataract. Of course, I know all ophthalmologists think same as him. But I decided to become an innovator who can change the common sense. And also, I wanted to see further something below the lowest position. So I fly to Los Angeles, USA. This is a building we do operation and clinic. This building is donated by one rich person. 
In UCLA, I can get temporary medical license with which I can operate just under supervise of US doctors. This is a photo of my international fellowship in US. After my big jump to US, I realized I might have a treasure here. So please think, what do you think the uh, underlying factors for success of clinic? I think like this, uh, I, I think like this, there is an underlying three factors. Gathering enough and adequate patient, and uh, second, gathering young doctors, and uh, enough and adequate sales. So let me introduce our medical group. It, in 2017, I opened cutting edge oculoplastic clinic, which is for only oculoplastic patients, excluding general patient. In 2022, we have four clinics in which do day surgery, including general anesthesia. And we perform 9,186 oculoplastic surgeries last year. 32 physicians, including eight full-time and 24 part-time. How I do that? When you open private practice, you may think, I've studied a lot of surgical procedures, cataract, glaucoma, vitreous, and the more I can do all of them, the more sales I can make. But for me, it's wrong. The first, how to gather the patient? So, uh, they're the common sense belief. Uh, there are two types of common sense. The common sense A is very old and uh, common sense. Example, don't kill people. But common sense B, recent common sense. The example, keep telephone card in wallet. The young doctors uh, never know this. So common sense B can change with time. What common sense do you have? The frog in the well knows nothing of great ocean. So what I value in my life? First, since common sense in the world does not always mean truth, I should go back to the starting point and think about it. Second, when making a judgment about something, it may be difficult to decide from my own start standpoint. So replace myself with a different position and look at my own situation. My style one only do oculoplastics. So when I wanted to study oculoplastics, senior doctor said to me like this, and a clinic that only does oculoplastics. So change your standpoint. Image, please image the restaurant. So uh, image the restaurant with a counter like this. So uh, Thai food, Chinese food, Japanese food, Italian food, everything in the menu. Or only sushi in the menu. Do you think which restaurant is better? It's easy to see the analogy in the restaurant. Adding more items to the menu results in lower price and lower satisfaction. But reducing the menu results in higher pr price and a higher satisfaction. So doing everything we can, your strengths. I recommend you focus on just one specialty, like chef and patissier. Do you know Blue Ocean strategy? The red ocean is an uh, existing market and battle from market segment. 
The blue ocean is newer market and producing market segments without competition. So general ophthalmologist is red ocean for me. But oculoplastic doctor is blue ocean. Uh, in 2022, uh, totally we performed over 9,000 surgeries. My style two, many day surgery under general anesthesia. So, we perform uh, 1,199 general anesthesia cases. The average is 23 cases a week. Do you think it takes a long time to replace general anesthesia? The finished surgery to starting the next surgery, uh, the staff have to do many things. But in my clinic, this replace is within the 15 minutes. So after the surgery, recovery room time, average recovery room time is uh, about 100 uh, minutes. Now, there is not, no case of emergency transport due to the complication of G GA. When can uh, we can use GA in my uh, in our own clinic, so we can do all oculoplastic surgery by ourselves. So uh, we do DCR, orbital tumor orbital fracture, orbital decompression for thyroid eye disease, pediatric cases, collagen, uh, epibrophone, trauma. So ophthalmologists, general ophthalmologists are easy to refer us as if they are throwing out garbage, right? So how to gather doctors? Master three, teach everything. So I have an uh, experience in US. So as a Japanese who has uh, experienced the world, I wanted to bridge the gap between medical care provided in the world and in Japan. So I want to make oculoplastic Japanese infrastructure. So feeling like a missionary, uh, what can I do to promote oculoplastics? I'm thinking like this. The problem of children not growing up without pa parents, right? In Japan, the lack of doctor who teach oculoplastic surgery is, was causing the problem that no one could train the next generation of oculoplastic surgeons. So in Japan, there are many text books. Uh, some of them uh, edited by me but you will never be able to do it just by looking at techies and pictures. So oculoplastic education on the internet. I did uh, oculoplastic education on internet. I saw that the greatest contribution to the society is to preserve the knowledge and experience on the internet and to pass it on to the next generation. So this is a toxic surgery, a video for toxic surgery, uh, 25,000 times spray. So true technique of collagen surgery, 92,000 spray. Not only poster operative videos, uh, but also a commentary. So explanatory video for scalpel and uh, hema, uh, hemostats, sorry, in Japanese. Uh, uh, can I uh, sound? No sound? Yeah. sound. Okay. Is that okay? Ah, okay, okay. So I broadcasting like this to teach the how to use the scalpel. And also, how to do the hemostats. Yeah. 
I made the slides and record it and broadcast it. So uh, next day, uh, I made this one, explanatory video for thyroid eye disease. So five videos, not only videos of surgeries, the improvement of surgical techniques requires more than surgery, which means the assessment before and after surgery is most important key. Surgical videos alone would be one-sided. So we are doing web seminar in every four months and sending the flyer to all ophthalmologists in Japan maybe 10,000 ophthalmologists. So I made this video every uh, four months. So, yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, director of uh, ocular facial clinic in Osaka, uh, Masashi Mimura. Uh, he, into he introduced the uh, uh, topic and the uh, lecturer uh, to the audience. So recently, almost of all residents watch my surgical videos. They watch the video and they visit us, and they want to join us. So my style four, give everything to young doctors. So think, please think what they want. Doctors are very diligent people in general. Especially young doctors are diligent. So what they want is knowledge and experience, more than money. So to cor correct young doctors, we should give them experience and knowledge. So our style and my style, we tell the patients with insurance they cannot designate doctors. The surgeries of them are operated by in experienced doctors and many drink parties I pay. <laughs> so how to make enough sales? So someone said uh, all that matter is sales. Is that true? Maybe true. So only three key factors of success. Number one, patients know us. Number two, young doctors know us. Number three, general ophthalmologists know us. That's all, it's easy. So uh, sales of our group, for cl including uh, uh, four clinics, uh, reach one million US dollar per month. So, I want to make oculoplastics in uh, oculoplastics Japanese infrastructure. So when I die, I want to be a missionary of oculoplastics in, in Japan and Thailand too. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the uh, front uh, entrance and the front of my clinic in Tokyo. It's like a museum. And uh, this is operation, uh, operating theater. Uh, we have two beds and two uh, microscopes and two uh, machines for general anesthesia. And uh, this is also the entrance of the clinic in Osaka. And in Osaka, uh, we have a very big operating theater and uh, uh, we have three beds. So. It is important to get at uh, the well of common sense. It is always yourself. 
where, uh, who decide not to go. Uh, we are proud of high rating of us. Can you see the 4.8? Now uh, decrease and uh, 4.7. Sorry. So thank you for kind attention. We are proud of cosmetic ocular surgery, and we did over nine over nine thousand ocular surgeries last year. International fellows and uh, visiting doctors are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tommy. That's yeah. really so impressed. Yeah. And I think um, that will inspire uh, the young generation yeah. so much. And I think um, the first question to you, yeah. I have seen that you have got the PhD. Oh, What's yeah. kind of PhD? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, system of university is uh, different among the countries. Uh, so uh, in Japan, the doctor, uh, medical student get uh, medical license, and then after that uh, go to the uh, how can I say college, college again, and then get a PhD. So if you have uh, a medical doctor and write a paper, uh, so uh, you can get a PhD. So it's very different from the U.S. system. Yeah. Right. yeah. How how many year that to take to get the PhD? Uh, four years. Four, four years. years. Yeah. yeah. Normally. You mean before the medicine? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, after uh, uh, graduating. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. And and Tommy show us that um, he 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 have a uh, ability to uh, go and break break through the yeah. the traditional <laughs> system. Thank you. That is a system that's uh, really, really, really good, and I think it's a wonderful idea to do that. And and for for the young generation, yeah. Um, uh, what is your recommend if someone feel like reluctant to come out? Because some people I have seen that many young generation, they they are very good. They have a lot of idea, yeah. but they keep in their head. Yeah. They could not go through the the like of the high fence that to to jump over i think once they have that some trigger that make inspire someone to jump up across the fence they can go through up the mountain easily yeah. like you right what what inspire you initially to jump over the fence <laughs> or, or you have the idea since you was medical school yeah. or during you you train in uh, residency in Japan or when you, you was in US yeah. what when uh, uh, originally uh, I have a, uh, some kind of uh, talent like that uh, so uh, I'm very good at uh, doing the kind of innovator thing uh, and uh, Actually, uh, innovators have a very opposite opinion. Right. Uh, so, yeah, like you, maybe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, all the innovators have uh, s some kind of opposite uh, opinion, right? So, uh, I have to say to young doctors is uh, maybe somebody want to stop your uh, decision. It may be, uh, it is for him or her. That opinion is for him or her, not you. If the person uh, who will promote you to go out is uh, thinking about your future, very different. So there are many opposite uh, senior doctors, maybe. But uh, it's good. Because uh, there's no one. I am pretty sure that during your starting your career, you may have some 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 difficulty yeah. or some resistance. How can you overcome some any resistance, and how can yeah. you want that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a very difficult question. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's easy to answer in uh, Japanese, but uh, I, I think the circumstance is slightly 
different in Thailand and Japan. And uh, yeah, I'm a kind of uh, genius. How can I say? It? Uh, so I think about the rule in the world or uh, yeah, among the people in public. So I, I want to found, find out the rule. Uh, so I, it, when I found out the rule, so I just follow it. That's all. I don't follow the uh, senior doctors. That's all. <laughs> That's a uh, very good answer. Yeah. And I think, I think Tommy is a very good ex, uh, example of that. Uh, he can something like show that he learned every day, right? He learned every day and he come and innovate every day, nearly every day, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. and he, when he do his job, he introduce his idea, his chair, share the concept, the knowledge. I think I have seen something that the more he share, the more he get, not, not only the money, not only the 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 reputation, but everything, right? Yeah. Everything. Uh, it ca we cannot imagine how 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 f how far he can he can go. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a yeah. yeah. I'm I'm studying from this situation. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Right. 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 I have seen some because uh, when when we start the clinic, basically I think initially. For every eye doctor, it's very difficult to start his solo private practice mm -hmm. by himself because we we not rich, we not that millionaire. We have no money at the initially yeah. when we start, yeah. right? Or but if someone can be the son or the daughter of the millionaire, that's easy. But we are not. I, I'm not. Nah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But yeah, but I ask you. How can because you use a lot of money yeah. at the initially? Yeah. Yeah. How how you uh, set up the system, or you have your own money, or you have to loan, or something like that? Yeah, I had a uh, big uh, yeah. I have a very big money of loan. <laughs> so uh, actually, maybe over ten. 10 million USD dollar uh, I have. Uh, so, to loan? Hmm? To loan? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. For the first one? Uh, no, no, I mean uh, total uh, four clinics right. and my home, maybe. Right. <laughs> but uh, it's okay uh, because uh, it's uh, the business of bank. So it's not my business. Right. Yeah. So they take some money uh, from that uh, budget. Yeah, yeah, from the, that room. That is their work. When I die, it's free. So I don't afraid. I never afraid. Yeah. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy is a good example again about uh, he can do the very good surgery. He is a very good uh, physician and surgeon. At, this, at the other part, he is a very good um, leader. For his own business, also that very Thank important. Yeah. It's very hard to find one doctor that good in surgery and good in in leader mm -hmm. in the business. Nah? So I think that's a very good example. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I hope the this this one gonna be inspire all of us, nah? <laughs> all of us uh, to to have your own. I I, I do encourage. Uh, if, if I talk to my junior yeah. or my uh, younger yeah, yeah. Uh, colleague, uh, maybe ophthalmologist, uh, specialist, or general, I think if you have the chance, you should open your own. Oh. Yeah, that's that's that better. You do think you right? Yeah, uh, from my point of view, uh, if the young doctor open their own private practice by themselves, the it. Uh, Traditionally, it's a kind of uh, rule, yeah. but uh, the problem is uh, we cannot see the connection from the public, right? If you uh, grow up uh, one doctor right. and he or she is very good hand, have ha good, very good hand, but uh, no one knows 
the doctor connect you and uh, uh, you are the teacher. That, that's a problem. Right. So I think uh, young doctors should uh, connect to the teachers and the, the groups. So I want to uh, connect whole uh, doctor. Uh, I, uh, like uh, my fellows, my students, uh, connect to my uh, oculofacial clinic group. So I want to give them uh, almost same uh, name of clinic, right. yeah, or uh, give the branch right. as a director. Yeah, and let let me ask about the fellow. Uh, the fellow is yeah. like uh, uh, come and learn with you. Yeah. How many years for the program? And I have uh, seen that you accept the international fellow also. That's okay. a very good idea. That's a good idea because when we are from the uh, uh, when when the we we when we was uh, finished graduated, we go to U.S. Yeah. If the our mentor in U.S. not not allow us for the spot to get the training, we yeah. have nothing. Mm -hmm. So he has a vision. He has a vision to train someone, and with someone maybe from not in Japan, outside Japan come to train with you yeah. and then they they came back they they come back and they yeah. go up their own practice like you yeah. that he is a, he has a vision yeah a yeah, yeah 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 uh, how can tell you tell us about the, your training yes uh, for for international at first uh, we uh, I'm very welcome because I was Los Angeles and uh, actually uh, I got money from uh, that, that uh, how can I say that uh, donated money every every month. So in uh, in LA, international fellows uh, uh, have a salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, salary, money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. So uh, I was very surprised. The one rich person, uh, U.S. people, right, uh, give us uh, money just an international and uh, go back to uh, our home country. Right. Why? Wow. I, I cannot understand. But uh, they give us money. Uh, wow. So, uh, so I, I think I have to pay forward. That, that's kind of good uh, sense, yeah, will. Uh, so I think uh, uh, my clinic is very welcome to international uh, visitors, right. yeah. So uh, actually, uh, from uh, Duan, yeah, Duan sent me uh, maybe ten uh, students, yeah. After that, <laughs> <laughs> after this, <laughs> like you, <laughs> after this, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it is interesting and uh, yeah, for me it's uh, informative, yeah. I'm very welcome. Uh, so, uh, if they're the in, uh, if they're the interesting interested in uh, the visiting uh, to our clinic, yeah, uh, they're welcome. And last question, question for me: ah, um, yeah. Can you tell us about your perspective and your idea about training? How important for the education? Training yeah. in private practice. Yeah. How important? Yeah, it's very difficult, right? Yeah. The young people, I, I always use analogy. Uh, I always uh, think surgery is Mario Kart. Do you know Mario Kart? Yeah. At first, you, you run the course. You cannot. Uh, go through uh, directory, uh, maybe go fence, go up, uh, <laughs> and uh, then uh, several times uh, after, uh, you can go very uh, quickly. So surgery is almost the same. Uh, so young doctor have to uh, make complication. It's very difficult problem. Different from the cataract, oculoplastic is uh, uh, kind of possible to recover, right? Uh, cataract surgery is very difficult to recover. Uh, so that's the point. I can recover almost of the uh, mistake. So yeah, I 
give a patient to young doctors. Yeah, I always give. Right. Yeah, that's why uh, I gather the young doctors. Right. Yeah. In, in Japan, is there any? I, I would say institute. Yeah. Yeah. Institute like this in in system of the medicine of Japan or only you, non? Oh, only me. Wow. <laughs> How about in other specialty like uh, uh, dermatologist, uh, uh, general surgeon, mm. or medicine, something like that? Or no. No. Mm. Wow. I I don't know that. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. Institute. Wow. So, yeah. That's 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 amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Question, please. Doctor Kanchana first. Like uh, the institute, the main institute, is it any resistance for this uh, thing that you you're building? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, actually, this is kind of uh, Oculus is kind of blue ocean, so there's no uh, senior, my rare doctor exists, but uh, very rare, so almost no. But actually, how can I say? From the main meeting, like uh, AAO or uh, main from main meeting, I was kicked out. <laughs> yeah, I can I I can submit the uh, uh, papers, but uh, they never uh, invite me as a, a lecturer. Yeah, yeah, uh, simple this like that. I mean, international or national? Ah, uh, national. International, yes. <laughs> You invite me, <laughs> like uh, always. Uh, I uh, attend uh, international meeting. Yeah. And also, next question. Uh, since you are like uh, work as a group practice, yeah. uh, how can you recruit a, a new generation as your physician, the, uh, the oculoplastic surgeon? How how can how how you? Uh, I mean, like the one that you have to work with, or you give like uh, the directors the position for for them to 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 take care of your your branch. How 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 can you be so sure? And how, what do you, what is that the the idea of you to recruit the? Yeah, uh, I, I uh, presented in the, the lecture. Yeah, I I'm doing the YouTube, and uh, I send the flyers to all whole uh, ophthalmologists. Mm -hmm. So they watch the YouTube or flyers. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I think many young daughters want to come to uh, see the, our clinic. But the part of that people we gather. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, every week, somebody, some visitor, yeah, vi visit us. Yeah, every week. Mm, nowadays, so maybe five years later, the physician num number will become very high. But they're, they're visitors. But how how about the person who work with you? Oh, what? Working together, right? Yeah, yeah. Almost doctor is not so bad uh, for the techniques. So yeah, I can teach them and. Uh, the student become the, a kind of uh, good person to teach. And then nowadays, uh, I have a apprentice, apprentice. OK, fellows, fellow. <laughs> yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, keep uh, making the next generation. Yeah. Is that fine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I want to know about the normal general po uh, of the patients who come at the first beginning or uh, that way you were setting your clinic is that what type it is of the patients I mean uh, self pay or government reimburse or insurance uh, mostly mostly because it's a private clinic right yeah yeah so the uh, insurance system is uh, different among Thai and uh, Japan. Uh, so mm -hmm. in Japan, the private clinic can also have an uh, insurance system. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, same I'm among the uh, hospital, right. public hospital, general, right. uh, government hospital, all yeah. same. 
uh -huh. uh, in the same insurance. So the insurance that means like a government reimburse or all like a private insurance. Yeah. That uh, do you mean? Government. A government reimburse. Yeah. In Japan. Uh huh. All all people have a government yeah, insurance. Yeah. All people. Oh. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in my uh, system, yes, uh, the patient uh, with government insurance is operated by fellows. Mm -hmm. Only the self-pay patient, I do surgery. Oh. So patient decide. All right. Okay. Uh huh. So okay. the maybe six percent of uh, my clinic yes. is self-pay. 60%? 60 percent. Uh, Sixty yes. in Tokyo. In sorry. Tokyo. Uh, in rural area, it's very different. All ah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Only in Tokyo. Right. Okay. <laughs> got it. I got it. <laughs> because very we we take care of Japanese patient also in in Thailand, and most of them have uh, like uh, governor reimbursements, and mm -hmm. uh, they can use for all disease. Maybe just six months in the same disease, but if it not improved, they may have to go back to Japan uh, to yeah, get yeah. the treatment. Right. Yeah. Right. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. That I have heard. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Please excuse my voice. Uh, um, just one quick question. Um, in Japan, is it required for doctors to have, let's say, if you want to do blepharoplasty or some orbital surgery, do you have to have some credentials after ophthalmologists to be able to perform those surgeries? Or you, you can just uh, maybe go to a private practice fellowships like the one you created and go perform those surgeries. Or is there like an institution that governs this? Uh, kind sorry, of uh, I cannot understand the uh, sorry. Um, uh, like, okay. can general ophthalmologists, like all I, of them, I, I if the if they are too far. if they are confident in their abilities to perform the surgery, can they perform those surgeries? Let's say blepharoplasty or orbital surgeries, or do they have to go through some kind of certification that is regulated by the government? Before they can perform. Ah no 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 no. Uh, oh, okay. uh, the patient can directly uh, come to my clinic. Mm -hmm. Just skip, just skip the uh, the the local ophthalmologist and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, the eye doctor, the ophthalmologist, the general ophthalmologist is able to do the the orbital surgery. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Japan, if do they need a fellowship no 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 no. But uh, if they can. <laughs> they cannot. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, do patients usually ask for like those credentials? Like, oh, do you have a fellowship in this, or do you have a certification in this before they allow you to operate on them? Uh, in Japan, uh, no patient knows that that kind of system. So maybe uh, some doctor do. Uh, Especially uh, plastic surgeon do if uh, he is uh, inexperienced doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So just make a problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the uh, general ophthalmologist always refer to the specialist. That's why I can gather the patient. Uh -huh. Yeah, general ophthalmologist never do that. Uh, that orbital surgery or recumbent surgery or uh, the, the surgery they cannot do. <laughs> now asking for... No, no. Asking for future, maybe future Thai fellowships, like future Thai ophthalmologist who wants to go to Japan yeah. and learn from you. Is there any test or any thing they have to take before they can go learn from you no, in Japan? No, nothing, but uh, I need... Uh, uh, re recommendation data mm. uh, from Duan or uh, Golf or you. Three, only three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so they, sure. they don't have to take yeah. like n uh, new medical licensing examination from Japan to be able to perform the surgeries at your clinic. Uh, uh -huh. No, no, no. Uh, I could get a license uh, from. Uh, U.S. government mm -hmm. in UCLA, but it's very special. Only in UCLA, 
It's same as in Japan. Uh, we cannot do, uh, give a medical license, so you cannot do surgery, even uh, do one. Yeah, uh, just observe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello. But hello. Uh, could you s uh, hear me right? Okay. I would like to ask about the general uh, anesthesia that you mentioned uh, that you perform in your uh, clinic. Uh, do, do you have to like uh, this only uh, IV sedation or they have to like face mask to uh, sedate the patient or do, do, do in your clinic do you have uh, anesthesiologist to uh, cover them or just you take care of the patient? Uh, yeah, only uh the doctor for general or some uh, general anesthesia uh, is do general anesthesia, mm -hmm. and uh, for local uh, we do uh, sedative sedation, sedation by myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so the the all this uh, IV sedation you take care of the patient and they go yeah. back. To, okay. No, yeah. no, like uh, in uh, like inpatient overnight. No, no, oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Thank no, you. No. Yeah, just out of patient. Thank you so much. In, in Japan, it's difficult to get a new uh, bed, uh, inpatient mm -hmm. space. Uh, it's kind of impossible. So there are very many hospitals, and uh, uh, it's a problem for government insurance. Yeah, they get money oh. yeah, from government. Oh. So and the government want to reduce mm -hmm. the number of beds. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Tommy, do you have a uh, from another country? Like uh, uh, beyond Thailand, Japan, any country, Africa, India, you mean? China, you have? Federal? Visiting Federal. Oh, yeah. Uh, the one is. Uh, hmm? Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
uh, in a day, uh, it means uh, 15, uh, 50 cases in a week. So every day I do, or uh, everyone, every in every clinic, do uh, 10, like 10 peop, uh, patients. So we never have a waiting list. Uh, every case uh, coming to our clinic have a surgery within two weeks. That's my, uh, our policy. So, uh, so maybe one year, two year waiting list is uh, too long. I had that, but uh, it's a the si problem of system. So just do it. <laughs> That's all. Uh, how can I say? Why, why so that circumstance will come? You do more. <laughs> you should m do more. No. That's Enough. Be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot understand, sorry. So, yeah, why do you make that kind of situation? That so, you should do an uh, oculofacial clinic in Bangkok. So. <laughs> That's my answer. I, is that true? And uh, <laughs> the the patient that have oculoplastic uh, disease in Japan, uh, most of them uh, refer to your clinic, right? Yeah, uh, because uh, only uh, how can I say the real doctor do ocul real oculoplastic, right? The general ophthalmologist. Uh, Morologists do oculoplastics, but it's not r real one. It's not professional, amateur, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so they know it. And uh, I'm a specialist, so they should do cataract uh -huh. because they are good at cataract, but not good at oculoplastics. So if they understand it, they refer to me. Uh -huh. The uh, year by year, the the many ophthalmologists refer us. So yes, yeah. even uh, five year has passed. Uh, my patient grow uh, twenty percent every year. So uh, before you uh, initiate your clinic, yeah. maybe uh, the the patient in Japan uh, have uh, no. Uh, no choice to to have the treatment, like mm, no in in uh, an oculoplastic disease. Yeah, it's the same as a uh, cataract surgery. Uh, maybe twenty years, uh, thirty years, forty years. Uh, there's no phaco uh, when there's no phaco. The indication is very low, low visual acuity. But uh, nowadays, uh, very good machine. There's a very good machine, and uh, indication spread. Very much, right? And the uh, number has increased mm. very much. It's the same. The technique grow and the uh, indication spread. Right? <laughs> so I think now maybe you the the idol for the young ophthalmologist to be the oculoplastic in your country. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I think uh, you should do uh, same way as me in Thailand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. So there's so many questions. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Tommy uh, influenced us to think about think out of the box. Yeah. It's time to think out of the box. Okay, um, so let's go to the next talk. Uh, Tommy will uh, give us about the lecture in his uh, famous cosmetic orbital surgery. I have seen his lecture in the international conference many years ago. He did a very good job in about orbital decompression for the fat decompression and for the patient that have the suffer from the thyroid and have the proptosis and let's see how uh, his technique and how good for the result it is. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, Tommy. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you for introduction. So uh, my next topic is uh, cosmetic orbital surgery. 
So cosmetic orbital surgery uh, is a new concept in oculoplastic region. It refers to the treatment of patients who are bothered by protruding or sunken eyeballs due to disease, accident, or congenital uh, reasons. So, exophthalmos and uh, endophthalmos, there are two types of cause of each. Uh, one is a condition from illness and uh, the other is by nature. Cosmetic orbital surgery treats those patients cosmetically. So, uh, there are uh, four types of con conditions. We are treating those patients respectively. About the ex ophthalmos, uh, for ex ophthalmos, uh, three types of condition orbital tumor, thyroid eye disease, and congenital ex ophthalmos. Uh, I will talk with uh, orbital tumor resection. Uh, the two main approaches to the orbit are transcutaneous approach and transconch approach. I prefer transconch approach for cosmetic reason. So this is a list of my preferred approaches. I vary my approach depending on where in the orbit the tumor is located. Specifically, the approach I choose depends on where in the four quadrants of the orbit and whether it is extracornal or intercornal. Now I would like to move on uh, to each of the topics. First, the lateral cantotomy approach. This patient is approximately uh, 70 year old woman. Uh, she has been seeing a neurosurgeon, but because there's a risk of blindness, she has, she has not been able to undergo surgery until now. Gradually, the protrusion of light began to interfere with daily life not only in terms of fun function, but also in terms of appearance. She came to our hospital, our clinic, looking for a medical institution that could treat her right eye. So MRI shows the tumor larger than the eye in the posterior part of the eye. Both T1 and T2 have similar signal intensity as the vitreous cavity. The border is clear. The diameter of the tumor is about 35 millimeter. How would you remove this tumor? I choose to approach through a lateral cantotomy incision. I started from lateral cantotomy and cut into anterior periosteum. Actually, this part is done by my fellow. And then, uh, Showing the periosteum in this region, I cut in the periosteum. So change to me and and cut the bone laterally. The key of auto tumor removal is how to use uh, malleable retractors. Using two malleable retractors, separate the tumor from orbital tissue and then remove it. So the tumor was su successfully removed and the vision was restored. Because of the very large tumor, the eye is rather concave after removal. Okay. Comparison of before and after surgery. The upper row is preoperative and the lower row is postoperative. You can see the huge tumor was removed and no scar remains in the skin. Compared to before, the protrusion of the eyeball has improved and the vision, which has almost blind, has recovered to almost normal. Obviously, her quality of life improved due to the cosmetic change. Next is a swinging eyelid approach. This is a technique in which an incision is made at the lateral contus and the conjunctiva is directly incised to secure large surgical field uh, below the orbit. She is approximately 50 years old. A left orbital tumor is present below the uh, eyeball. The increased size of the tumor has caused a poor pressure on the eyeball resulting in deviation. 
This surgery was done with swinging eyelid approach. So inferior lateral quadrant, there is no important tissue. So I finished it in 18 minutes. I put this video on YouTube. If you want to see uh, such a YouTube. Also, relatively difference in left and right eye shape and the eye position have been resolved. After surgery, he uh, regained symmetrical eyes cosmetically. So the next approach is upper eye crease incision. The patient is approximately 70 years old male. The right eye is compressed by the tumor, causing not only ocular protrusion, but also downward deviation of eyeball. MRI shows the tumor in the lacrimal gland area of right orbit, compressing the eye. I choose great crease approach, dissecting into the perostem and exposed bone. And then after bone removal, I remove the lacrimal gland tumor. Lacrimal gland tumor have loose adhesion laterally and superiorly, so you should start with that area. It has tight adhesion inferiorly and medially. I recommend to loosen posterior side of lacrimal gland and dislocate it. And then cut the medial region and the inferior uh, adhesion. Comparison of before and after surgery, it can be seen that the preoperative protrusion of eyeball has cosmetically improved. The tumor has stretched the levator apneurosis, resulting in a blepharoptosis. Uh, this will be fixed by aponeurotic repair. Let's move on to orbital fatty compression. From orbital anatomy, the four walls surrounding orbital tissue uh, lateral, medial, floral roof can be decompressed. The, the compression of each four walls have each benefit and risk. We must think about the risk of bone decompression. It is damage to surrounding tissue outside and inside the bone, such as brain, nervous, viscous, and nasal cavity. The most serious problem is brain injury. The surgeon, surgeons feel fear for the fatal event and this method have relatively high probability of new onset dipropia. But bone doesn't play any role in thyroid eye disease. The increasing volume of fat have important role for the, uh, proptosis. Ideally, the target should be something different. Fat decompression is five, fifth wall for me uh, uh, for orbital decompression. The uh, new onset dipropia has, uh, is 2.8% of the cases. So why I change my uh, fast choice from bone to fat? So, uh, fat decompression have four advantage comparing with bone decompression. It can create natural form without skin scar. Recovery time is very short and the result is predictable and adjustable. However, posterior orbit is so dense with muscle, nervous, and viscous. Remodeling only fat seems like an impossible task. So I will tell you how I remove orbital fat without damaging those important tissues. We always use microscope for orbital fat decompression. Leica M320 is made for dentists. It is also uh, so good for chiropractic surgery and also cheap. It costs about 30,000 US. One fifth of normal microscope for ophthalmologist. The microscope is necessary for orbital fat decompression, especially for intercoronal fat resection. And spatula is good too for invading deep orbit without damaging important organ. Then which area of orbital fat can be removed? This MRI can, uh, MRI is from the patient of thyroid eye disease. So which area of fat do you think be removed? 
Of course, orbital fat can be removed from four quadrant, avoiding four rectus muscles. Uh, one is inferior medial quadrant, infralateral quadrant, uh, superlateral quadrant, and uh, uh, supermedial quadrant. And uh, behind the lacrimal carnacle. So orbital fat of lower quadrant can be removed from inferior fornix and upper quadrant can be removed from upper eyelid crease. Now I explain the basic concept of orbital fat decompression. The first, removing fat must be posterior to the uh, equivalent part of eyeball. Anterior part of orbital fat play no role in uh, for protrusion. The second, more posterior uh, you go, the more effective it is. The cross-sectional area of orbit change depends on the position. So posterior fat removal is more effective, but it, it is also dangerous. So I will ex explain how I remove it. About extra corner fat, you can just remove it roughly with adequate knowledge of orbital anato anatomy. You must re remove intercorner fat gently using two spatula push aside two rectus muscle for each quadrant, then intercorner fat will pop out from the intramuscular septum. The fat should be loosened before removing, and only loosened fat can be removed. Intercorner fat contains tiny but important nerves and arteries. You must pay maximum attention for removing. This is a movie of fat decompression. You can see this video in my YouTube channel. With, with transconch approach, fat tissue can be removed. At first, we remove blepharoplasty fat, and then go into the external corner space and remove the fat. Then uh, we remove inter corner uh, space uh, and remove the fat from the uh, space of muscles between inferior rectus and the lateral rectus, and also between inferior rectus and the medial rectus. So, now I explain how to remove the inter intercorner fat. Intercorner fat is very soft and uh, amorphous. The using spatulas uh, make fat pop out and unravel it gently, uh, softly. You can remove only uh, unraveled loosened fat. Uh, don't tear off small fibers and B cells. Then we also do fat decompression from upper eyelid crease. After removing anterior fat, I remove extra corner fat uh, posterior to lacrimal gland and uh, internal corner fat. And then going to uh, super middle part of orbit, remove the extra corner and also inter corner fat. So the patient is a female, female approximately 30 years old. She has fatty hyperplasia of both upper and lower eyelid with ocular protrusion. Post operatively, uh, both upper and lower eyelid show improvement in adipogenesis. There seems to be no fat gain due to tire eye disease. So here is a comparison of pre and post operative result. Pre operatively, the eyes had a uh, glaring look due to the protruding eyeballs caused by the fat gain. Both upper and lower eyelids have been flattened, giving a beautiful impression. This is the result after, oh, sorry. Uh, we performed both upper and lower fat decompression for this case. Before surgery, uh, upper and lower eyelid had fluffy, was puffy and swollen. After surgery, the eyelid became thin and uh, skinny. Especially, please take far side of uh, upper eyelid. Eyelid become sharp and natural. Then, next case, 30 years old female. After onset of thyroid eye disease, 
her appearance has completely changed. After two types of fat decompression, she was back to her old self. One of the advantages I want to e emphasize is that fat decompression can cha change the pupil, pupil distance, right? Pupil distance will change, okay? Thyroid eye disease make both eyes apart, Rem uh, removing fat of just behind the lacrimal carancle, where is medial position of eyeball, eyes become closer. So next for congenital and uh, sorry, exophthalmos, sorry. Uh, of the fat decompression can treat congenitally proptotic patient. You may think that change is small. But you know, however, from the side, you can understand the change. Comparing the top of eye and eyeball, it is remarkable eyeball position changed. Uh, different from uh, thyroid eye disease, congenital proptosis don't have increasing volume of fat. So there is limitation to remove the fat. However, if the patient need to remove fat more, we can remove fat as much as possible. The deepening of the orbital sarcus cause uh, completely different appearance, which may bring impression of aged person. Again, we may remove fat as much as possible if patient demands, but it may result worsening of impression. As a conclusion, any exophthalmos can be treated by orbital fat decompression surgery to some extent. The next is enophthalmos. The cause of enophthalmos is orbital fracture, uh, enophthalmos after inadequate fracture repair, and the congenital enophthalmos. Oh, sorry, this is enophthalmos. The first is orbital fracture. This patient has severe enophthalmos with orbital fracture. And this patient has enophthalmos with orbital fracture too. And this patient has enophthalmos even after several surgeries in the other hospital. Orbital strut is supporting structure between media, media wall and the floor. Break of orbital strut causes severe enophthalmos. We must check the location of orbital strut before surgery. In the A, orbital strut remains although media wall and the floor is broken. But in B, uh, orbital strut, media wall and the floor, all structure is broken. The key for preoperative assessment, uh, consider whether the shape of the right and the left orbit is symmetrical with the uh, nasal septum as the center. Especially, you need to check the location of orbital strut. The key for post-operative assessment, uh, check the location of strut, uh, medial wall and the orbital floor. So this case is the kind of perfect case. Uh, proceed this case, the assessment of orbital reconstruction by ENT surgeon. This is another case after uh, the ENT surgeon. The surgeon removed orbital bone, so orbital strut disappeared and enlarged. So uh, we use transconch approach for all cases because the no scarring on the skin, and only one to two stitches for closure. So totally short operating time. We put a video on YouTube explaining how to approach the orbit, uh, but it is in Japanese, sorry. For reconstruction of orbi orbital strut, we always release muscle tendon of inferior orbic muscle. After this, uh, you can see medial wall and the floor in the same view 
and insert a big plate. Conversely, without releasing inferior orbit, you cannot see both walls I in the same time, same view, and cannot insert a big plate. This is a paper model of reconstructing media wall and floor by one plate. We also use uh, the other supporting plates if need. Uh, this patient had a severe of enophthalmos on the left. He was just observed until being this condition. He had orbital fracture including orbital strut and the medial wall, uh, wall and the floor. Post-operatively, the position of orbital strut becomes symmetrical. Also, medial wall and the floor too. The left enosalmos was recovered to the normal after surgery. This patient has left enosalmos on the left. Ah. So on CT scan, orbital strut, including medial wall and floor, was broken. So we performed uh, repairing surgery. Post-operatively, the position of orbit, orbital strut becomes symmetrical. Before surgery, enophthalmos and the superior sulcus exist on the left, but it disappeared after surgery. So this case had a severe enophthalmos because ENT surgeon removed all orbital bones before using balloons. The high right orbit ha has enlarged due to the lack of supporting tissue, so I dissect between the orbital tissue and the nasal mucosa and inserted the plates. After surgery, the position of orbital strut becomes uh, become symmetrical. When you look at her eyes, it is very symmetrical after surgery, although it was symmet asymmetrical before surgery. Also, she can put makeup after surgery. She cannot do it before surgery. The next is congenital enosalmos. So, aesthetic hyaluronic acid uh, gel is a uh, drug injected primarily into the face. Uh, co complications include ar arterial occlusions, which can cause skin atrophy and necrosis. Really, it flows back into the ophthalmic artery, uh, causing central re retinal artery occlusion, or into the intracarotid uh, artery, causing the cerebral infarction. Although such complications discourage the use of hyaluronic acid injections into orbit, our clinic specializes in orbital surgery, and uh, based on our knowledge, we have been injecting hyaluronic acid gel deep into the orbit for patients who wish to have it done. There are many reports filler injection cause ophthalmic artery occlusion. The mechanism of, of OAO after filler injection is, uh, it is caused by filler uh, mistakenly injected into the angular ophthalmic artery or other arteries that goes against the flow of the artery and reaches the deepest part of orbit, entering the ophthalmic artery. So the filler was injected in, into some artery mistakenly, and then uh, filler go deep inside the artery uh, retrogressively. And at the junction of ophthalmic artery, the filler turned toward eyeball pro progressively in the uh, ophthalmic artery. However, it is not a problem of orbit. So I think to treat congenital enophthalmos, is there any technique uh, safety inject filler into deep orbit? So we, uh, what we should consider is anatomy and technique. About anatomy, I had two questions. Where is the location of ophthalmic artery? And how far is the orbital apex? The depth of orbital apex is reported to be uh, 
uh, 42 millimeter. It is so far. So actually, you don't have a sharp needle uh, which can deliver the filler into the apex, even it is very big needle. If it can reach, it can make damage to ophthalmic artery, central retinal artery, and the optic nerve. How difficult it is to get into the retrovalvular space? That it, if the eyeball is perforated, there is a great possibility of blindness. There are techniques that can an anesthetize the eyeball without a uh, burnt uh, needle. So recently, ophthalmologists avoid retrovalvular injection with a sharp needle. So my method to deliver hyaluronic acid gel into uh, deep orbit safely, I'll show you. Now I use a 24 uh, gauge cannula, cannula needle, the removing the outer uh, casting and the cut away. So, and cut away the plastic part of the base of the needle. And then, return the sharp needle into the uh, casting case. Uh, in, in then insert the cannula needle into the skin. Stop at the point uh, shallow enough not to uh, pierce the eyeball and uh, remove the injection needle, burnt, uh, burnt needle. Uh, no, no, no. Remove the injection needle and uh, leaving the outer uh, casing in the place. A cosmetic 40 millimeter blunt uh, needle is then placed inside the penetrate inside to penetrate penetrate deeper, uh, safely reaching a depth of approximately 40 millimeter. So let's move to the case. The first case is 42 year old uh, female. I injected 1.5 hyaluronic acid gel into the deep orbit from three locations. After the injection, obviously, shadow in upper eyelid decreased after the injection. You can see the change of two eyes. The eye looks more natural and the severe enophthalmos reduced. So you can see the change of two eyes. The eyes looks more natural and severe and enophthalmos uh, reduced. The patient was pleased very much because our clinic is only one which cosmetically treat congenital enophthalmos. The second case visitors also complaining about the congenital enophthalmos. Actually, I don't think she have enophthalmos but she eager to do filler injection. After the injection of 1.1 cc hyaluronic acid gel into the orbit, the eyes become bigger and the circus of both eyes disappeared. Comparing case one, the amount of filler is less, so the change is less too. The eyes become bigger and the circus of both eyes disappeared. Intraorbital hyaluronic acid gel injection into the posterior sphere, uh, retrovalvular space was uh, possible. However, one patient experienced interorbital hemorrhage due to a vascular uh, perforation and there is a possibility of arterial occlusion. 
therefore, this procedure should be performed with great uh, caution. Now, thank you for kind attention. And uh, we have uh, our guest, Dr. Dr. V. Uh, Dr. V, do um, you have any question, please? Dr. V is uh, our good friend. Yeah. She uh, is a senior star oculoplastic uh, mentor in Lama Tipadi. Lama Tipadi is one of the biggest uh, medical school in yeah. Thailand. And she she graduated in UCSD mm -hmm. uh, after yeah. me about four or five years, right? Uh, she is a great one of the great orbital surgeon in Thailand. Yeah. And okay, uh, Doctor Wee, uh, comment for the orbital surgery for us. And any question, please. All right. No. All right. Thank you so much for like for your good excellent talk, and um, kind of like for injection of the hyaluronic acid into the orbit that was yeah. a very interesting yeah. um do we need like kind of like orbital imaging before we going to do this kind of procedures yeah uh, actually i need that image <laughs> but uh, th this case is uh, uh, kind of self self pay because uh, a cosmetic injection uh, so i cannot uh, order that kind of images. I need that. I want that. Okay. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Like on the safe side, right? Yeah. So yeah, like yes. maybe we kind of need need that before we're gonna go ahead with the procedures. Yeah. And like when the injections um when you're gonna do the procedures, like how you explain to the patients is like um was what we supposed to to get after the injection yeah. and what is the safety of the procedures and how it's gonna lasting long for the procedures it's gonna take. Yeah, uh, actually I explained the patient this procedure is not safe. <laughs> no one do that and no one know uh, about the complication. So is that okay? I ask always, but uh, they think uh, they won't. Yeah, they eager to do injection. And like, which of the space in the orbit that ah, yeah. um, the hyaluronic acid is gonna take place? Yeah, uh, because I do very many fat decompression, so I know uh, which space is safe. Yeah, that. Uh, even in the deep orbit, ex extra corner space is safe. Okay, okay? Uh, so I inject the uh, hyaluronic acid gel into the extra corner space. Okay, but uh, it may cause a pressure. Uh, of course, uh, it will make a protrusion uh, eyeball. It is. It means uh, pressure on the eyeball, right? Mm -hmm. That's the uh, same pressure will. Uh, go to the uh, ophthalmic artery. Mm -hmm. Now it may cause uh, occlusion. Yeah, I explain. So everything. you have to let the patients know, right? Yeah, yeah. And also, like, kind of like the optic nerve compression also. Yeah, yeah. It can happen, and um, but like, I, I think uh, of course, optic nerve compression can happen, but uh, the I know many uh, thyroid I patient and uh, almost none uh, developed uh, DON, desired optic neuropathy, right? Even the, the very severe proto prototypic patient. Mm -hmm. Only the patient who have uh, the enlargement of four rectus muscles Right. Got you. That, yeah. was, that, that was a yeah, yeah, very yeah, interesting yeah. point. Yeah. I got you. Like you feel like um, for DON, it always happened with like the enlarge of the muscle, and you feel like for type one, I mean for like the fat predominant yeah. thyroid abitabody, always like not got the DON. So do uh, do apply this thing to the injection of the hyaluronic acid. 
so yeah. you feel like it's kind of safe but yeah. you have to be careful a lot to do that yeah. right yeah of course of course yeah, yeah and yeah. um do you have any complications for this kind of procedures uh actually uh in only one case uh, i had a uh, retro valve hemorrhage but uh, uh, i stopped the injection uh in at that time so uh Actually, only the, that case, mm. and uh, around this area, uh, of course, you know the uh, there the B cell here, yeah, and uh, uh, for the lower eyelid, no complication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like on the procedures, you just put the, the needle in, or do we need the incision and to get the plane, or you just put the needle in? That's all. Uh, yeah, the uh, blunt needle, uh, just rotating it and then uh, roughly push into the orbit. <laughs> and for the effect, I mean, um, how does it gonna take? How how does it long to take like the the effect of the the hyaluronic acid? Because like when we mm -hmm. inject the filler somewhere else, right? Yeah. it's gonna goes away by times. And yeah, for in the yeah, orbit, yeah. how yeah. does it long? to take uh, the effect of that? Yeah, I everyone say that kind of uh, things, but uh, uh, from uh, UCLA, uh, Dr. Goldberg, uh, this uh, presentation, I understand he inject a uh, filler to the upper iris sulcus, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, I have his slide, and uh, no additional uh, procedure. Uh, the uh, she had a uh, uh, that shape uh, even after six years ago, and also uh, when I opened my clinic, I started uh, cosmetic injection, and uh, my fellow injected my uh, uh, around eyelid, and uh, she made uh, bumps, and I uh, I never treated that, and then five year years later. <laughs> Uh, it continues. It's still there. Yeah, still there. <laughs> so it means uh, in the five years, the hyaluronic acid never go away. I I'm not sure, but um, in, in from my experience. All right. Yeah. So for how long that you like do this ca these procedures? Do okay, you did yeah for how long? Ah, uh, only the less than one year. Uh, so okay. not, not so many patients. So like we still keep an eye on, right? Yeah. Like what's yeah. going to happen later yes. or like any kind yeah. of long-term complication yeah. or like how the effective of the these procedures. Yes. Yes. So yes. we still like have to keep an eye on that. Yes. All yes. right. Thank you so much yeah. for this yeah. excellent talk. Yeah. Thank you. Question for Tommy: For the orbital fracture, yeah. if the if you have a really big fracture, or of the start and posterior lead is gone, medial and four is so big fracture. What is your favorite implant in ah, Japan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we call it a uh, uh, superfixal. Uh, is a uh, high uh, to upper ceramic seat. Uh, can bend or like a uh, uh, plastic and the, uh, the outer film will go away and uh, only the center of the hydro shaft site remains that kind of uh, seat I use do you have a PATN specific implant in Japan like uh, like uh, mow it and like uh, imp printing in 3d printing uh, no I have no experience for that. I want to try. How about you? Oh, we, we use some. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, and we have a quite good result. Oh, good, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. We use the, we have two uh, material in Thailand. Yeah. The first one is uh, we use PMMA. Uh, yeah. They use yeah. like uh, mold it by manual mm. and uh, send the mold in the 3D, pin t uh, 3D scan and then pin it in like a PMMA and then sterilize it and use it. And second one, we use the titanium. The, the whole titanium came from the software mm. and it's customized and pin in, in the titanium piece mm. and then put it. But 
I think the titanium one is no flexible, but the PMMA is flexible. Yeah. It could be adapt, um, uh, drill, um, uh, sculpting, and uh, customize again inside. But I think titanium is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, for the next one, uh, uh, we, we, we move to Dr. Kanjana. Dr. Kanjana is going to give us a talk about preventing complication in ASIN blepharoplasty. Okay. This one is going to be the very another insulating one because uh, nowadays, tell me, you know, uh, cosmetic surgery in Thailand is so popular in the recent year. Oh. Ten years ago, it's not so popular. Nowadays, is so popular even though general practitioner plastic surgeon uh, oculoplastic surgeon I general ophthalmologist came to do the a lot of the eyelid surgery because it's a it's a trend now dr. Ganjana uh, she is one of the person who is a uh, like quite Okay. Really, first one right, that uh, uh, okay. introduced uh, the 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 technique that uh, called bifloplasty, uh, epicantoplasty. She have a lot of experience, and we will enjoy her talk. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, please, uh, 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 Doctor Kanjana. Uh. Doctor Kanjana is uh, our good friends, our good colleague, and she uh, graduated from City Lab hospital uh, and after me about a couple years and she she trained in in Sidirat hospital in the residency program after that she worked for the uh, uh, Ayutthaya uh, uh, provincial and then go to the tra oculoplastic training in UCSD yes. after that she came to Meta Pacharak Wat Lai King and then uh, now she is a private practice in Bamrungrat and at, at I. Uh, Dr. Kanjana, thank you very much for coming and join us. Uh, please. Thank you. It's my pressure, <laughs> pleasure to be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, like Dr. Natterwood already uh, mentioned that uh, blepharoplasty now today in Thailand is really popular and spreading rapidly. Uh, let's say that uh, 10 years ago when I was uh, doing my fellowship in uh, Samsung in, in Seoul, uh, there's a lot of advertisement everywhere in the underground train station everywhere in Seoul. But right now Bangkok is about like that. It's like it ads everywhere if you like to see on the uh, expressway everywhere. Yeah, we are, we are being like uh, Seoul <laughs> now. Okay, so what is the good... Uh, Okay, what is the good blepharoplasty? So uh, we are uh, to know that uh, the blepharoplasty, the, the good one for, in my opinion is the for cosmetic, acceptable with uh, natural and the still maintain the function. Okay, not, not like malfunction eyelid. So, so we must have to maintain the functional eyelid. So the goal of the, sur uh, the surgery is uh, aesthetic. If the patient come for consulting for blepharoplasty, you have to consider about the function, uh, vice versa. For if the patient come to consult like a ptosis or any functional eyelid, like ectropian or entropian, you have to have the outcome as cosmetic also. So, so it's coming both uh, together. So blepharoplasty is kind of customized. It's not like uh, how many millimeter you always do uh, uh, something like that there's not like a magic number for everyone so everybody needs to be customized so it's an art so it's like art like we plan to do a painting like like uh, the uh, watercolor painting like this so we need a plan uh, we need to know the good technique so we need to know the how to present uh, what's what's uh, the outstanding of the the, the subject so it's a kind of like a preference. So it's need to stop somehow. You know how the limitation, like a, uh, this is, if you're gonna do more like the, uh, more than this, it's not gonna be nice anymore. So you have to uh, set up the, your standard. So the best outcome needs a good doctor and also a good patient. We will meet a happy result. 
the good doctor should be a well trained for blepharoplasty uh, experience uh, on the technique and uh, know the, 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 the technique and the also have a good judgment with a well mindset uh, had a standard at, at least and first do no harm uh, if if you know already you're a doctor you should know that better than patient or a sales or some 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 person uh, so you know your own limitation you know the uh, the patient uh, that anatomy so if, if you uh, we are not, not going to do something that uh, causing some trouble and you know how to manage the complication if it's happened unexpectedly uh, also uh, you are a doctor you need to give just the information uh, the choice uh, and let them decide also the patient is need to be the one that match you uh, it's like like a uh, like a uh, boyfriend girlfriend so you need like a matching so you speak the same thing so you think about the same kind uh, in the, and the, also the realistic expectation uh, and then they should have some information in their mind because uh, like uh, what is the good one what is the uh, bad one so not only like follow the review or uh, social media uh, nowadays that's uh, a lot so in my in my uh, practice normally uh, I interview patient first uh, I'm not going to jump like to do the the surgery like right away on the first day that that we met uh, normally when we when I when we talk uh, I would say uh, I know them what they want I know what they want uh, I know what their uh, knowledge in in general and they I actually I also observe the personality how they dress, how they uh, make up. Uh, sometimes we, 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 can, we can know a little bit on the information, what, what they like. And if it's not match my preference, or sometimes I choose the patient too, it's not them only choose the doctor. Uh, so on the first uh, consultation, I also do the eye examination. We check the ocular surface. If they have a dry eye, it probably, probably the difficult uh, or challenge to do a blepharoplasty or even ptosis that it can cause the uh, more dryness. Uh, do if she has ptosis in the picture of patient this one, uh, you, you can see there are some asymmetry, a little bit of asymmetry on both eyes, uh, some brow ptosis a little bit, and ptosis too. So like I mentioned, now today we have a lot of uh, information uh, influenced by many factors and also all of uh, the digital information. So we are Asian. Uh, our eyes should be look like Asian, not like um, like Caucasian. You know, the, uh, a lot of trend nowadays they look go for a Caucasian like Sai Fo in Thai. Uh, it's like Farang, no? Mm -hmm. That's mean that we we more like a ca uh, Caucasian look, which our orbit is smaller. Our uh, the the anatomy of the the pink one is the uh, the liver aponeurosis which attacks lower. What would happen uh, if we do high crease in Asian? If we fix the high crease, even the higher that might cause the 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 higher uh, attachment on the liver, so which can cause a uh, complication as ptosis. You have to keep in mind. So uh, normally when I design the, the eyelid uh, height or the shape, I, I try kind of conservative. I'd rather not uh, making like a crease more than 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, this per, uh, slide is about like a unnatural high lid crease, which is not my patient. Uh, yeah, you can use this from internet. It's not, you, know, you can find anywhere. Uh, yeah, there are some patients who have a consultation that have suffering from uh, the high lid crease that uh, look too high and unnatural and you can see all of them uh, all of this patient has the same common problem is ptosis uh, sunken and uh, unnatural scar mm -hmm. also the technique uh, of the crease that is necessary is like uh, the patient who has a lot of uh, I, I mean like at least two they have a uh, one cut here and the other cut right here uh, with a separate incision. I don't know why. Uh, or uh, a trend in Korean, Korean trend right now, they need, uh, they, they do like a, 
uh, the uh, blepharoplasty with the enhanced uh, the or, uh, the levator uh, and uh, also uh, open the corner inner corner and uh, the lateral cantoplasty that like open like four direction dimension that can cause a lack of tomos and uh, dry eyes the, uh, the patient consult with a uh, came to see because she has a, a corneal ulcer same as the lateral cantoplasty is the procedure that I said uh, is dangerous. Uh, I, I, I personally not do that and I, uh, I, I not uh, I recommend any patient who do that. It makes the eye burst and uh, the almond shape of the eye is lost, the, the normal anatomy. And some patient they have like a irritation because they are scar that attached to the eyeball itself. Uh, this patient have uh, also uh, the surgery that uh, pulling down the lower eyelid and they causing the, the entropion and the eyelash uh, rubbing because there are the stitch, the suture that fix the re lower lid retractor to the inferior orbital rim. Um, there are some pa patient that, that has like a three, three stitch, uh -huh, three stitch pathoplasty long time ago and they come with a SLK chronic uh, conjunctivitis is not uh, resolved. Uh, yeah, if you you careful enough, uh, work up a lot already uh, for SLK like uh, thyroid or what whatsoever, and you flip up the eyelid eyelid and you see the stitch exposed over here, and it causing the ptosis and also the chronic inflammation. Now today, like <laughs> here's the aggressive. It's like many many kind of trend. In, in Bangkok, in Thailand right now, that is what the, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I will not mention, but uh, it's preference. They, they might like that and uh, there's some doctor that willing to do. So it's, it's like that uh, patient select uh, doctor and doctor should select patient too. That person uh, is not mine uh, for sure. Not our uh, eye doctor, I think, uh -huh, not oculoplastic. Okay, and also the social network, they have a social media, which is also a lot of review, uh, a lot of good things that they say in the review, not, all, not a bad thing. Every clinic said about the good thing. No one said, oh, I have like uh, complications, this, that, those. So it's like the expectation of patient is kind of like go forward on the favor on the op positive side they not think that they have a complication too so even like this is my patient uh, I think it's nice <laughs> but she complained the wound is a little why it takes so long to heal or whatever okay that's it <laughs> let her complain <laughs> okay now how to achieve a good plasty? so the good technique the good choice good surgi surgical technique, patient selection, and also the, the correct the diagnosis that you have to, to include in everyone. I show some of my patients that I uh, had done. These uh, are uh, young patients who I did the small uh, incision, blepharoplasty. Uh, I rather consultation them as a natural and makes a, a not too big crease and also make herself make themselves still like the same person not like if you put a mask in covid uh, time and uh, none of your friends rem uh, can remember who are you so uh, there are some uh, like uh, problems that combine uh, with the uh, bephroplasty can help like uh, entropion uh, the epibephalon uh, like in this case uh, it makes oh, what happened okay so uh, I uh, sometimes I add on the epicantoplasty in the patient who had uh, epicantal fold that makes the eye uh, already bigger without doing the lateral cantoplasty. Uh, there are some of the young patient who had uh, a lot of eyelid skin that uh, probably need uh, to cut uh, the skin. Uh, not 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 like uh, uh, the young patient. Some 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 of the young patient needs the the conventional blepharoplasty that's mean cutting the skin because they have a lot of skin uh, this patient al already had a small incision which is, uh, she said that is still not enough uh -huh. so, so she uh, had add on the the, the upper uh, blepharoplasty like a long incision and cut the skin and fat um, 
Yeah, there are some of the long incision for for patient in the some patient who had like a deep eye like this, deep set eye. Oh, sorry. Deep deep uh, orbit like this. Uh, the they're quite challenging for me in my opinion. Uh, to make it too big, it's make they look age. Uh, but if you make it too too small, it probably look like not change that much. Uh, there are also some entropian and epibephron. Uh, they change quite dramatic uh, without making any ptosis. They are only the entropian patient. In a patient who is a little bit older, so uh, yeah, I, pro I, I mostly do the, the conventional blepharoplasty, cut the skin. If there are some of the uh, droopiness, like a minimal ptosis, I might enhance a little bit of the levator tucking. Uh, yeah, there are deep uh, orbit like this, uh, and also with a, a little bit of ptosis. So uh, this patient, I uh, do the conventional blepharoplasty, uh, low ptosis, and also fat reposition to fill the sunken. Just show quickly because we had only like fifteen minutes, right? And everybody might be hungry. <laughs> There's some <laughs> aging change. Uh, I mean, like uh, in elder, a little bit elder patient who had a uh, ptosis. Uh, I did not do a lot of uh, enhance on the height of the eyelid crease. Uh, I rather cut some part of the skin, not too much, but I, I, I try to keep them look uh, natural and uh, be themselves. In some male patient, uh, yeah, they, are, they help in, in like this. In this case, it's functional problem because the drooping skin of the eyelid is the uh, problem of uh, vision. So uh, doing the blepharoplasty in uh, this kind of case uh, is help to improve the vision and visibility. Also with the elder, mm -hmm. and try not to do too much and they don't want to look uh, to uh, feminine in, 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 in male patient. So yeah, it's gonna be a quick one. So uh, the, the, the blepharoplasty, anybody can do, but uh, I think uh, we cannot stop uh, uh, some of the doctor to, to do that. I, I encourage everybody should do, but uh, once they, they, they want to go ahead for doing the blepharoplasty, they should, be un should well understand about the anatomy and they should know how to prevent a complication. Uh, and should consider aesthetic and functional as the same thing and they co uh, should go along. So it's an art, it's a customized, so they need a, a, a learning curve to do that. Uh, when I started, that, there's a lot of cases that uh, I do not satisfy on the result. Everybody, every surgeon that, that has that problem. So no, no need to uh, be scared about the, the, prob the complications. Uh, if you know how to manage and you know how to take care of the, uh, of the patient. So less is more. You don't need to do too much and do, uh, uh, for the patient. And uh, I think the principle is everything uh, that you have a standard, you have, you have uh, set up your, your standard. Mm. So uh, if, I mean, the patient forced you to do that or consult you, you, you will not like favor them too much. Mm -hmm and trends comes and then it goes. Uh, it's not lifelong, but natural is, is the one that, that, that's normal. That's make people's eyes look normal and functional. So uh, sometimes marketing uh, is good, but uh, if it's not too much, uh, for me, for me, I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of want to be a low profile. I don't want to be uh, too busy. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> So word of mouth, no, no, nowadays my, most of my patients they come like for referral, like friends of the friend of the friend, yeah, something like that. Okay, <laughs> we hope you, uh, good luck with your blepharoplasty, that's uh, my daughter. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much Thank you very much Dr. Kanjana uh, for a very good talk and we got a lot of point. So let me ask you the question. For what is uh, your advice for uh, young generation uh, want to be the eyelid specialist like you? Mm. Uh, what should they start from if they graduated the uh, general ophthalmologist? What the next step to mm. to learn to 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 be like uh, you? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, if you have a chance that you can go for a fellowship in oculoplastic, is is a good choice uh, if you go ahead for that uh, because you will know the, the anatomy of the whole, not only the eye, eyelid, the orbit and everything, but if you you not uh, uh, oculoplastic uh, and you want to go for only the eyelid, uh, yeah, you need you need to learn. You need to uh, learn from uh, the the master, the the person who who do the good things. You you not learn from YouTube or whatsoever, uh, and or you learn from the academy that that not well. I mean. They, they, they train like a very briefly, uh -huh, something like that. You get to go deep and uh, you uh, have an idea for that and then you practice. Uh, a better choice for, for a start, uh, a good start for, for beginners is uh, in, in aging patient. It, uh, in elderly, uh, because uh, they, you help uh, with the function, uh, improve the visibility and also you can can make the, the, the cosmetic outcome uh, nice too. But uh, keep in mind that uh, in elderly patients, sometimes, it's some, some, uh, sometimes it sounds easy, right? But they also come with a ptosis. Sometimes they have uh, brow ptosis with uh, uh, yeah, some of the, uh, something that drooping. So uh, only the blepharoplasty probably not enough. So you have to choose the, 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 the first case or the, uh, the beginner's case that uh, doesn't have a lot of factors. And then you advance for ptosis. And you need to know ptosis. You need to know how to correct ptosis as well. Mm -hmm. That's almost uh, come together with that. Right, Dr. Takana uh, mentioned a good point for if you want to be the eyelid specialist, want to be the best eyelid surgeon, best, best uh, Asian blepharoplasty surgeon, you need to know ptosis very good. Because if you got a short cut training about the blepharoplasty, you pay a lot of money, but you can do simple blepharoplasty very good. But when you practice in the real life, you professional, you open the clinic, the ptosis care will come. And if you don't know how to perform the ptosis properly, don't know how to correct the complication, not to know how to correct the suboptimal result, sometimes that one gonna ruin your career, gonna ruin your reputation. That's really bad. Nah? And, and that's a, that's a mention. Uh, let me ask Tommy. Tommy, how, how, how popular for the cosmetic Asian blepharoplasty in Japan? I, I know that we know that in Korea yeah. it's so popular. <coughs> yeah. How popular as in as in Korea or not? <laughs> yeah, of course in Japan uh, it's not so uh, popular uh, like uh, Korean, but uh, actually uh, yeah, young population do cosmetic tend to do cosmetic surgery, and uh, the price of the cosmetic surgery is cheaper in Korea, so many young. Uh, patient, young, young people uh, go to Korea and do surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about? Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in Japan, yeah. how many men is a uh, young, 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 young patient come to you and would like to do the cosmetic Asian blepharoplasty? How many millimeters that you will perform? Uh, uh, what do you mean? For the height of the crease. Ah, uh, me? Yeah. yeah. Generally, what I have seen in your YouTube, yeah. the, the staff do about 5 millimeters. Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so you, you see my YouTube. Yeah, and, and <laughs> they do under microscope, <laughs> like we do cataract surgery. That's yeah. in, it's related to me. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I do, uh, uh, I use microscope uh, always. For all uh, our surgery, uh, and uh, the microscope is for dentist, not for ophthalmologist. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, and the making if you make uh, high decrease, it's very difficult to go down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I recommend the fellows uh, to set the five millimeter from the uh, CD. So uh, if the patient want more uh, high eye decrease. Uh, I can remake it, revise it. Uh, so, if the fellows 
make a very high read grids, I cannot yeah, repair. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comparing to the time you was in U.S., perform a lot of Caucasian, and when you come back to Japan and uh, face to the Asian anatomy, can you tell us about the which one is easier, which one is more difficult, and what the difference between the Asian and Caucasian anatomy? Yeah, uh, from my experience, uh, Sika eyelid uh, cause a, a huge hemorrhage. Right, yeah, so Caucasian have a very thin eyelid, yeah, so maybe very easy. And then uh, sick eyelid, the Asian have a sick eyelid, have a uh, uh, hemorrhage uh, very severely, and uh, it's very difficult. And uh, can I can I say your comment? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I have a opposite comment mm -hmm. uh, for you and. Uh, Elderly people is not an uh, easy case mm. because, uh, uh, how can I say, I always use uh, analogy uh, in the restaurant. The young patient is uh, like a very fresh food, okay, fresh material. It's easy to cook, right? Whenever uh, you, you have uh, um, uh, whatever technique you have, it will become delicious. Mm. But you know, elderly people is not fresh material, <laughs> right? <laughs> Almost dying. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's very difficult to uh, make a very beautiful eye. Yes. So it's my opinion. Mm. And can I? Ask you uh, one question. Sure, Just sure. Why? <laughs> do do you do cataract? I d I do I did. I ah, did, you but did. But now today is uh, <laughs> less and less to be yeah, to sincere. Yeah. yeah, less getting less and less because most of my consulting <laughs> there are a lot of good, good, eyelids. Good and question, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a fellow, uh, came back from Japan, uh, from US, US in 2004. Yeah. I like you. I do 100% oculoplastic yeah. for more than 15 years okay. and have done a lot of the oculoplastic, many thousand cases and have seen whole complication and after that I leave from the public to the private yeah. and at that moment I was in public, I did not do the Cadillac at all, yeah. I let my fellow do that so I have a uh, very few not that super good in the Cadillac but then I moved to the private. You know, sometimes your patient that you did the eyelid, they did the, the compression, they, have, they want you to do the Cadillac for them. Initially, five years ago, I come back to do the Cadillac. <laughs> but, you know, when you do, we do the orbital, orbital decompression. <laughs> I, initially, I, my hand is shaky more <laughs> than do the orbital decompression. <laughs> so that's represent that if, if you, but the, the point is when, when we f the point is uh, the good chance that when we was in the public, we did a lot, we learned a lot, and you actually and knowledge it with you, not go anywhere. When you go anywhere, you can the the, the experience that gonna in your body, you, you can do any case and you know complication, you know how to aware. That tell me when you go to when I uh, go to private practice, so I can survive by myself. That's the point. But the problem is when I come back, I go to the private, I have to learn one more time and the slow. But nowadays, that's fine. But I think it's, uh, if, if we focus like Tommy did, that when you, when you focus in something, some topic, you go and immerse and do a lot. When you like, uh, like concentrate in that point, you can know everything in, in this field. And then, you, 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 you create a new, a new issue, a new innovation like Tommy did. So that's, that I, he is a very good example to inspire all of us today that 
why why he can grow his practice so good and so uh, uh, wonderful and and I think today we learn each other a lot a lot Dr. Gardner taught us a lot and our every comment uh, we we all enjoy in, enjoy so much nah? and and so any question from the audience I, I I thank you very much for all of you I think this is a a small small opportunity that our office a very small one I'm sorry that the space is not that big but we, we try to uh, put academic in in our environment so I be, because I think if we are doctor we learn every day we learn each other we share each other the more we get the more we get we get we, 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 we give we, we, we get back uh, uh, oh Mexico Henley so and and any comment please any question please ajan ครับ Dr. Tommy do you still perform cataract surgeries? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I would like to ask uh maybe ask ajan คน Thai มากกว่า uh what do you think is the trend in Thailand? Do you think like in ophthalmology, everything will be much more specialized, and <coughs> when you're specialized in one field, you will no longer perform cataract surgery, for example. Because mm. I believe that is a trend in the U.S. right now. For example, retina surgeons, they don't perform FACO mm. anymore. Ah. Yeah. But in Thailand, I think it's still the opposite. Like, we still have to perform cataract surgery, just like you said, because patients still want that done. And me. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and me. <laughs> I don't know if the next 10 years Tommy will come back to the. No. <laughs> Never. Uh, can I have a comment? Yes. Uh, I had a dinner with Kim Kwang. Uh, I, I want. Uh, she is watching the video at, at, at this uh, lecture. And, uh, and she said she uh, do, she's doing a cutter too. But uh, the amount is the five percent of what he, uh, she said. Mm -hmm. So she must be busy, mm -hmm. right? Why? Mm -hmm. Why don't mm -hmm. she don't doesn't cut the mm -hmm. five percent of what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 Go back home earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I think the point is you're going to do the cataract or not. It depends on where you work and what the environment, what is kind of the office, what kind of the, the hospital, what kind of the patient. If you work in the, like Tommy, you can do the 100% oculoplasty and he enjoy, he enjoy that, he love that. And, but, but for me, I work in the premium private practice. So sometimes the, the cataract will come. We have, we have to do something like that. And we, I bought the cataract machine. I bought the microscope. I bought the IOL calculator. So I have to, I have to, something like that. But uh, in it, I think for you, is uh, you are young generation. You have the power. You have the, your ability. So I think you can create what, what type of you, you, you want, but focus and concentrate and go to the top, go yeah, to the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, I said to uh, Sunny, uh, yeah, I cut the breakfast and uh, I cut the lunch and uh, I'm concentrating at the dinner. So dinner is important for me. Uh, every day, I do a good restaurant in Tokyo, mm -hmm. right? It's at 5, 30 or 6 or something. Mm -hmm. So I have to be clean, uh, early, right? <laughs> <laughs> every day. So I should cut my work. 
I can try to come back. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's like for me, I just feel like if you have the questions like what you're going to do in your practice, it just depends. Um, I have to say, you, it just depends. You have to think like what you're going to give to your patients. If you feel like you work really subspecialty and you are not g as good as before in some other fields, yeah, you start doing that. But if you feel like I am still have a very good hand in taking care of this patient in some other field that is not your subspecialty, if you still can do a very good care of your patients, keep doing that. But if you feel like, no, I'm not very good at that anymore, stop doing that. That is my point. So I'd rather refer. <laughs> so one one more one more question for you, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, because you have a very ba busy. How you manage your work life balance? Nice. Yeah. Uh, why you separate the work and life? Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, uh, for me, work is hobby. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spreading the minorities, uh, the uh, adding the, the branch, mm -hmm. and the teaching uh, to the young daughter. Oh, all all is my life. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all. Passion, passion. Yeah 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 yeah. Missionary. Missionary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 That's all. Yeah. We, we have a question from the online. Uh, uh, if the patient got the bephlopathy and they have the uh, epicanthal web, like a scar tissue or hypertrophic scar on the uh, inner corner of the epicanthus, uh, what is the cause of the uh, uh, the 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 hypertrophic scar and the web, and what is the uh, you see, and what is the cause, and how to correct and how to prevent uh, this one. Alina, <laughs> oh, they have a pic picture. Ah, oh. They, they, uh, oh, okay, ha. they have a uh, blepharoplasty that, uh, e with the epicanthal fold. I think the, basically the patient has an epicanthal fold, uh, and, uh, it's not being corrected. And once you do the upper blepharoplasty without, uh, uh, manage the skin medially nice enough, there will be like a, like a direction. But that, that picture is still still swelling. I think it's probably with weight some times. Mm, sometimes sometimes they show 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 picture to this one. But if for me if it's just recently done I, I probably wait until the swelling subside. Uh, and uh, if it still persists, uh, I would do the um, epicanthoplasty later. Yeah and this case have the hypertrophic scar and the high how uh, the epicanthoplasty? <laughs> I would do the normally. I would uh, like doing the the C plasty. Uh huh. Yeah, the C plasty or uh, for this case. Oh, I should. I think I think this case the crease that the surgeon create is a little bit too high. So it's not that harmonized to the original medial fold and there's have some excessive skin uh, on that point. So I think the point is, uh, one, is a little bit excessive skin, and second, the crease is too high. If you make a, a crease a little bit too low, it can be harmonized to the original crease. But if this one already happened, what to correct? You bring the old picture of the patient before the surgery and show the current picture. And most of the patients, they have original fold already, but they have the 
extended from the original fold to the hypertrophic scar. So calm down them by showing them the original picture. Oh, you have already had the, this, this line already, but it's just prominent. Calm down, it will be faded by three to six months. And if you're not worried, massage it. But if you worry, to worry, I'm going to inject the Kinecot 10 mg per cc inside. That's uh, how to treat and follow up them monthly and inject every couple of weeks. That help. And initially, finally, for about three to six months, three to six months, uh, it will fade that by its own. But if it did not, not, not help, um, I think, uh, uh, but this in this condition, most of the time it will it will all right. It will be all right. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you have to ask the patient first about the history of the keloid. Sometimes if the patient have key history and the family genetic of the keloid, the healing will flow a couple three times, five times, and sometimes they have a uh, hypertrophic scar more than normal. So, and the epicanthus is moved a lot. Every time, you, because you blink many thousand times a day, so this area have the tendency to have the hypertrophic scar or keloid. So, uh, immediately in my practice, uh, after finish the surgery in the last stitches, I sometimes inject the steroid, 10 cc, 10 mg per cc, about 0.1 cc in intraoperatively, that to, to help. Uh, what do you think, Tommy? Yeah. Yep, Do Dr. Duong, any comment? I would like to ask Dr. Kashima. <laughs> My name is Mink. Um, I'm the uh, resident three of Thammasat Eye Center. I would like to ask Dr. Kashima, how did you get the temporary uh, medical license in the U.S.? And are there any possibility that we can get the temporary medical license in Japan when we um, practice um, training at your clinic? Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, in U.S., uh, especially. Uh, there are many uh, university hospital and uh, there are many fellowship program, uh, but uh, only maybe ten uh, university uh, uh, university hospital have a uh, international fellowship pro pro program, uh, but only one uh, university can uh, get a temporary license only in UCLA and uh, there's a very high competition there maybe uh, only one person can enter uh, out of the 40 candidates so you can apply UCLA did, did you have to take the exam like USMLE uh, no, or? no 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 uh, just uh, like an uh, interview and uh, yeah biography or something like some kind of scholarship or yes yes they're the scholarship oh. yeah that connected to this temporary medical license yes you yes you apply at, uh, UCLA uh, through, through UCLA and uh, you, you can get it just after three months uh, something yeah are there anything like this in Japan uh, in Japan it's very difficult yeah there's no system for that yeah, so uh, only the way is you pass the J Japanese examination <laughs> in, in Japanese. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Tommy. If you are the Japanese doctor and you apply at the fellowship in U.S. and you fail on the first time, what are you going to do next? Oh, uh, you mean uh, apply, apply for first the year? No, 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 US? no spot in the first year. What and what uh, I mean it's very difficult. If you apply for the first time, you could not get the position. Oh yeah. Uh, what you gonna do next? next? Are you gonna apply next on the second year, third year, fourth year? Yeah. Actually, uh, the international fellowship in UCLA is very uh, high competition. So I may apply the different uh, place. Yeah. 
how about uh, SD, UCSD? Oh, uh, you know when you when was my time when I applied to the US? Um, that moment, twenty years ago, we was really we were not that you have no money. I have to uh, apply for the some funding from the loyal college by interview English, and they have some funding for uh, fly take a flight from Thailand to US for the American Academy. With, with this one, we have no money to fly, so like uh, uh, we have to go to attend the uh, lecture of the mentor, and we sit in the back of the room and waiting for Philip lecture. And like a Chinese uh, movie, when you go to the mentor, you have to run to them, let, uh, introduce yourself, and tell them, I'm from doctor from Thailand, I have nothing. I would like to be your student, and can you accept me? If, if like, like you be, uh, sit on your knee, right? <laughs> if, uh, the first time if you could not get that position, and that mentor is so good, and you know he's really good, he teaches you very good. If you fail on that point, the first year, you try second year. The second year, you could not, you try third year. I think one day you could. But most of the people, the first time they got put no thing. They, they, they leave to that one. That means you are not so addicted in the oculoplasty. Tommy is addicted, right? Like, like passion, like he, he born to be, something like that. So that's, that's, that's yeah. why. Yeah. Actually, Ming is uh, our resident in Thammasat University, and she applied for Gokuma <laughs> Fellowship, right? But if she is still interested in oculoplastic field, I think uh, our Thai oculoplastic doctor will help the, the new generation, right? And Dr. Gop, uh, graduated from UCSD, he can recommend you, right? And and uh, try to try to make a, a a letter for recommendation. Yeah. Now today, I think there is the official. Uh, as suppers, American Society of Thermic Plastic because Sang Ferro, right? And I think there are the many channels, and, and I think the Thai oculoplastic doctor will support for the new generation of doctor for every every institution in, in Thailand because we, we want to to make it happen that the young generation have, have a chance like, like us, right? Thank you. Uh, me, please. Yeah. Uh, about my uh, history, uh, I started international uh, presentation at uh, 2009, and uh, every year I had uh, maybe over four times of presentation in internationally. Now some of them, uh, Dr. Goldberg, Goldberg uh, see it, uh, so we met uh, each other before international fellowship several times. Okay. So you need to do your work, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why uh, yeah, he uh, accept me. So uh, my mentor in Singapore said, uh, first time uh, the person met some person, it's kind of just a shake hand, and the uh, second time they know each other, and the third time they become friends, okay? So see each other several times is very important. Dr. Goff did it, okay? If you want to go somewhere, yeah, you go several times. It's enough. I think, I think one, one point, you, you do your job, a little job, the best, as best as you can. And the other people, your mentor will see what you have done. So if you so good or you super good, the mentor <laughs> will, would love to pay you. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's very important. That's very important. But you are now in Glaucoma. <laughs> 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 Still. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's a we, we, uh, for the last lecture, that my lecture, we have no time. So let, let, let do next time. Okay? And uh, finally, eventually, I would say thank you for all of you. Nah, 
that them join us. That mean a lot to us. That uh, I think thank you special thank you to Tommy that he he his time is so precious. So he uh, let us have him for half day. So he lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, but we 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 glad that he here and he. I think today we I I got inspiration. We got inspiration. We got inspiration. We share each other. I think that gotta be. Uh, you are the future. You are the future. I think. I think. So anything in the future that we can help, tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Uh, we can. We can. Uh, we can help. The more we can do, the good for our people, Thai people, Japanese people, and good for our society. Even though you are in the public medical school or private practice, you can learn every day. I have my clinic. I learn every day. You know, I, I have uh, open clinic, the small clinic. I, I focus on ocular surface. I take a look a lot of my women can need function. I bought the IPL. I, I did 3,000. 300,000 care chart of the IPL. So I learn a lot every day about the severe chronic right eye because we are all eyelid surgeons. We cut in eyelid every day. We see inside the meibomian gland. We see how bad it is. So we, we can treat the severe meibomian gland, severe dry eye very good because we are eyelid surgeon. So that, that we learn every day. So if you guys think that you are so good, you want, would like to job, uh, work with us, work with him, with him, tell, tell us. Nah? And we, we work together, we, we go up together. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thank yeah, you. Please uh, tell some uh, thing to uh, our participant at home, please. Okay. <laughs> so, at last, uh, I'm closing. <laughs> so, uh, actually, uh, this is the first time to give a lecture in English for one hour. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> but you know, uh, even in the old doctor challenging the new thing. Why don't you do new things, right? So challenging uh, new thing is uh, create your life better. So uh, please keep learning and uh, uh, change your uh, standpoint and uh, uh, situation to different place. Yeah, and uh, it will uh, make uh, Thailand, whole country, uh, grow up. That's all I want to tell the young doctors. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much.